Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where today we're gonna do the Firewalker DLC! <laughs> Finally! Oh yes, no yes, this is where we want to go. Oh shoot. I forgot we were in the middle of doing this. Oh dang, really? Bro? I thought we were in the... I'm losing my mind. Oh yeah, we just did Legion's thing. Okay. Okay, I just did a really quick count. I just wanted to double check. Uh, we have, I think, 10 systems done. And we have 12 that are not done. Most of which do have something that we've, you know, at least touched in them. You know, like the system we've gone to a bit. This is one of those ones that's only a DLC one. So I think it only has one thing in it. Um, but we're about halfway, which is kind of where I thought we would be. But first... We get to go to this system where we need to get some stuff done anyway. Really quick, I'm going to just, you know what? I think I'm just gonna poke these planets and see if they have anything that I wanna, like a mission, and then we'll come back to it. A group, ooh, see this is one of those cool ones. On a recent tour of the Alliance Surveyor Ship, Coupe discovered a group of partial graves hidden in the equatorial mountain range. The ancient skeletons of the burial site are obviously humanoid, but incomplete and poorly preserved, which has made them difficult to identify. Fragments of primitive ceramic grave goods were also found nearby. This raises further questions about who once traveled to this inhospitable planet, since the closest garden world, Walterno, has no intelligent life. Human universities are planning further archaeological investigations. Oh! When I tell you guys, and I've told you guys this before, I know. And I would love nothing more than to be a Xeno archaeologist. <laughs> oh my gosh, it would be cool. Although always, those, those always kind of um, end badly, or at least go badly. They don't necessarily end badly, they go badly for somebody. Because you're interacting with things that we have very little to no paradigm for. So like, uh, things happen, like in the Murderbot Diaries, and like, I think, yeah, Anne McCaffrey's got one, The Ship Who Searched. Um, with a little girl whose parents are archaeologists and like she ends up there's just a bunch of stuff that happens because she gets infected with like the alien an alien virus of some sort you know like stuff like that always happens so like they're all the archaeologists are always out there exploring and they're getting like infected or something and because they're dealing with something that they it's not even like a human thing where you're like hmm yes i can probably understand like the basic paradigm the mind frame the, the thought process of you know prehistoric humans they have many of the same basic instincts and thought processes we have that i discussed kind of in like an earlier episode if, it, if that episode still stayed the way like intact <laughs> um we're like, well, we have the same biology, so we have at least similar thinking processes in many ways. Um, but yeah, uh, something totally alien is like, like, you have no idea what anything could be, you know? And it kind of shows up in um, Horizon Zero Dawn a bit, which is interesting. We're like, the humans are trying to like think about what some of like the, the, the ancient mugs you know <laughs> they're like he's like it's obviously like a beard uh like cleaning like set or something and it's just like it's like well, i mean it holds things you know like it's you're a kind of on the right track like it can hold a liquid you know it can hold like an oil <laughs> you know like so it was like on the right track ish but like not quite you know Currently in an ice age, strong gravity presents. Oh, this is the Elcor home. Oh, and Elcor cannot breathe the planet's atmosphere. Hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think I don't have to start scanning to find a mission. Like I, she just tells me, "Oh, I found an anomaly." Okay. Shoot, an independent Volus prospector found the mangled wreck of a Perthian starship trapped within the trailing Lagrange point. A few artifacts from the wreckage have been recovered. The prospector was canny enough to keep the Hulk's existence to himself. He sold this location to a Turian paleotechnology firm for nearly a million credits. Jeez Louise. Uh, like, I get it. I get it. Like, but at the same time, like, I, I get, like, you want to, like, make a buck off of something but like and at least they sold it to a pillar technology firm and not like you know hopefully it's more of a like 
because I, I mean, I technically, I'm a contractor, technically, I'm a contracted archaeologist, and so, like, I, I have no moral high ground of, like, academia or something, like, I am contracted to do a job, and I do the job, you know, um, hopefully, this is similar, where it's, like, you know, and there's, like, the paleontological, uh, biologists, botanists, all of those, though, most of the people who are working in those fields are working with some sort of contracting firm, um, for jobs that require their expertise, you know, so, like, hopefully this is that, <laughs> like, kind of a thing, where they'll study it, you know, and hopefully not want to, like, make a profit off of it, but who knows. I mean, you make a profit off of it, like, and they make a profit off the archaeological work I do, like, the company that I work for, like, they, they bid for a project, and then, like, they try to bid high enough that they can make, like, a, you know, that they can make a profit off of it while still, like, paying people <laughs> and everything. I, I don't know, I'm not gonna. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No deaths were reported. A council specter arrived. Ah. No deaths were reported. Oh, ho, oh, oh, it doesn't mean anything. Is that an anomaly? Uh -huh. Zion has a thin atmosphere, sulfur dioxide, and trioxide created by volcanic outgassing. There are traces of water vapor in the atmosphere, but over the last five centuries of observation, particle counts have decreased 4%. While not habitable by any space-faring species, there's an abundance of native sulfur-devouring bacteria that thrives around the world's many volcanic vents. Interesting, these, ba these bacteria bear genetic just similarity to the native life of Ilium, suggesting either a panspermia spread of vi vi microbes via asteroids or accidental contamination of the original environment by careless spacefarers. I don't know if I've done the Firewalker DLC. Probe well launched. Scans have found something. I've been located the Hammerhead Exploration Vehicle and also show active data storage sites that may contain information as to the whereabouts of Doctor's Case and Oloy. Yeah, I don't... I'm actually not sure I've ever... done this one. Let's check out... Let's check out the new look for Legion. Bring the Legion, cause they're my favorite. It's probably it's not the beefiest of squads. Let's just say that. Ooh, fortification. Yes. Actually, I will work towards that. Thank you. I totally forgot about that. I will change the arc projectile to the missile launcher, and we should be... Oh wait, we do have... Let's have Legion try... Why am I not... Why would it... Why... It did not... I thought it would automatically upgrade them. Wait, 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 wait. Legion can have the Widow. Against armored vehicles or Krogan. Nice. Who are also armored vehicles. Essentially. Sapient armored vehicles. Ah, the Widow was never designed to be carried or fired by a human. Though this modified model can be carried, no ordinary human could fire without shattering an arm. So you can use it if you want to use a sniper rifle. Like, if you have a class that can use a sniper rifle because you are enhanced. But it is, I think, technically a geth weapon. I did get the incisor. Let's try that one for him. It will be difficult for me to tell because I will not be the one holding it, but... I have a hard enough time keeping track of my own abilities without babying everybody else's abilities. something to look at. Duh. Just 
gonna open the door. I don't think I've ever done this, actually. This is new for me. Why couldn't I have this in Andromeda? They gave me a... Primary systems online. <clears throat> Welcome to the M44 Hammerhead <clears throat> Infantry Fighting Vehicle. This is your onboard VI. That merits a second look. Oh. This. This is weird. Obstruction detected. Okay, though. Path is now I have been asking for. Ooh, I think I was supposed to go a different way. I don't know. I have no idea where I'm going. Um. I've been asking for a hovercraft for ages. Maybe I have done this before. Wait, is this the... Oh! Wait, 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 wait. Does that indicate research? I thought it indicated like a jump point. What is this? This is weird. It's just... I mean, it's money, which is nice, but... This is such a weird way they're like research collected. I'm like, what do you mean? Why it sounds so angry every time. I don't like that. That, that is uh, disconcerting. Ah, okay, we go under. But yeah, no, for Andromeda, I was desperately hoping we were gonna have a hovercraft. Um, I was so excited. Like, I was, I just, I thought, and now, the, now is the time, you know? I was like, we're gonna have a hovercraft that's gonna be way easier to get around. You know? But no. No, we got another six, uh, another vehicle, but it had six wheels this time instead of two, or four, rather two. Um, but... Going under, then I guess. Mission objectives located. Required. This is this is really weird, honestly. I don't know how I feel about this. This is just like a collectathon. But I have al I have always wanted the the hover vehicle, so here I go, I guess, with my hover vehicle. Mission objectives completed. Really? That's it. I get to, oh, I bet you I can go look at it. Like, I can't actually touch it. I did acquire the hammer in. Um, the missions, go, there's like five or something. Let's see. If that's it, that's, uh, that's wild. <laughs> sure. Like, it's like you're gonna get, like, journal entries. I'm like, yeah, we got the hammer in, but, like, I don't know, do I get to use it when I land on any other planet besides a, um, like a, a firewalker mission? I should go check my, uh, the, 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 the cargo bay? I guess, yeah, it would be in the cargo bay. 
Crest Rob, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Maybe it happens in Mass Effect 3? Or in a book or something? Here it is, the Great Rift Valley in Clendagon. Uh, the Clendagon's most striking feature is the Great Rift Valley that stretches across the southern hemisphere. What is most fascinating about the rift is it does not appear to be natural. The geologic record suggested it is a result of a glancing blow by a mass accelerator round of unimaginable destructive power. This occurred some 37 million years ago. So this is one of those indications. It's beyond the 50,000 year mark, right? So it's one of those indications of, like, either another species that's not the Reapers committing giant warfare, or it's another indication of the Reapers out there just totally ruining everybody's day, and this planet now, the only thing it has left of that is a giant rift valley. Which, I think in Mass Effect 1 you could see it, but I don't know if you can see it in this one. Anyway, I love seeing those tidbits. I feel like I may have done Firewalker once and then just completely forgot about it. <laughs> Maybe it's actually cooler than what I'm remembering, but... Or think I'm remembering, or falsely remembering. Though the flattened by millions of years of high pressure, the marks of orbital bombardment strikes are unmistakable. It's generally accepted among academics that whoever hailed from or settled Schwarzwald's second planet, Itemus, must have had outposts on Itahela as well. So whoever was here also got decimated by the Reapers. It is a postgarden state that clearly shows evidence of attack from space. And while now waterless, the shores of former oceans show patterns of cratering too regular to be anything but saturation bombardment by dreadnought class kinetic weapons. Although it is unclear how, most of the atmosphere has been lost. Archaeologists have found little of note. It appears that all settled regions were touched by global bombardment. The few relics found suggest an advanced spacefaring culture thrived on the world somewhere between 20 and 40 million years ago. The level of antiquity makes it impossible to estimate the world's former population or guess whether it was the race's homeworld or colony. Ooh, how frustrating. Like, not even be able to tell that kind of a thing because there's just so little left. <laughs> but there is evidence of other people, like other species, besides the Brothians. <laughs> and it's interesting, right? Because this is a 37 million year old, 37 to 50 million year old culture, potentially, right? It's surrounded by several thin rings of debris, and also the debris has been difficult due to extreme age and fragility, but several apparently nano-manufactured materials have been identified. The leading theory is that the inhabitants of Intimus mined the atmosphere for Helium-3. Again, this is a 50 million year old culture, like, from way, way back, that did the same exact thing that we are doing now. Again, because, as we just learned, as we learned, you know, like, because Legion brought it up, like, the, the Reapers have been around for who knows how long at this point. I don't even think we have an actual number for that. And they have had this technology up for potentially, like, I don't know, billions of years. Millions of years at the very, very least. And they've been able to control the evolution, like, technological evolution of every inhabit, like, every species that comes through, you know? So, because, like, it makes sense, right? Like, we talked about, like, the whole, like, um, the, dis the not the dissemination, but, like, the uh, independently coming up with similar paths to the same technology idea, which happens on Earth. Like, you know, it's a very standard theoretical model and an actual methodology. Um, but this is kind of wild, right? And, like, the, the fact that maybe nobody thought, oh, maybe a different species maybe could could have done it a different way. But they all came across the same exact pro or the same exact Reaper technology, rather, and they all do the exact, basically the exact same things with it because it operates a certain way and it gets handed to them. And they're like, sure, why not? And they don't think of other ways to do it. So helium three extraction for fuel is the standard method in this galaxy <laughs> because of what the Reapers did. And it's just, it's just wild to me that like potentially nobody has like thought about that that it's like they just think oh yes it's the most efficient way obviously everybody's been doing it this way for a reason and it's like but what if there's another way you know nobody's thought about it really i mean maybe they have but like and not on a, not on a large scale it seems if 
this is just going to be a collect-a-thon, by the way. I'm making this one giant video <laughs> and just leaving it at that because it's like, okay. You are reserves at 50%. Yeah. See, I think Mass Effect 2 makes the planets prettier, but I think it does not necessarily have the same, like, visual markers. Like, it's like, oh, the most obvious feature are gigantic pair of storm cells on the northern and one on the southern hemisphere. And I don't, like, in Mass Effect 1, you could distinctly see it. They pointed out storm cells or the Great Rift Valley. Like, I remember what the Great Rift Valley looked like in Mass Effect 2. Also, some of these planets are definitely repeats. <laughs> They're like, there's like the blue and gold one or like the purple and gold one that are repeats repeats um but yeah like i don't know like there was one there's one planet in mass effect one where there's there is a giant storm cell and you can actually see it um like they pointed out in the text and you can see it on the image but in this one it seems like it's just like plant like it's a gas giant here's a generic gas giant you know maybe that's just me maybe maybe i'm just noticing it like i don't maybe i don't have a detected an anomaly. big enough sample size to say that but Initial surveys of Korang noted its high density and active plate tectonics, suggesting a high internal heat field by a greater than normal concentration of heavy elements and radioactives. Early test cores proved the mineral riches of the world, but distance from the mass relay in the century system made it unprofitable to develop until the late 2183. The atmosphere is a smog of methane, ammonia, and water vapor, so called primordial soup, similar to the conditions of early Earth. However, there is no evidence of life developing on Korang's surface beyond the level of simple dextral amino acids. The minimal energy output of the Red Dwarf Fair have created an energy starved surface environment, though the planet's volcanism does hold to open some possibility for subterranean development. If it's dextral amino, it could be Turian, maybe, but also the ammonia atmosphere makes it sound like it would be good for Volus. Also, it probably just sucks. Nobody wants to live there. Probe away. Scans have found something. They found locations matching the descriptions of Dr. Case's survey sites. Exploring the sites could reveal valuable mission data. Warning, Geth presence detected on the planet's surface. Use extreme caution. Let's go. Of course, we have to fight Geth. I forgot. The guy brought up Geth, so we're gonna have to fight Geth. Let's bring out my boy. I think we'll last a little better. If we have him. Yes, we should be good. Oh, I meant to go look at it in the hangar. I, I can't actually go into the hangar, but I can see the, the, from, like, the... Essentially from, like, where Grunt and Saeed are, I can look down. Oh my gosh, I wanted... I want a hovercraft. Why can't I have a hover... Well, you know what made me really want a hovercraft specifically was, um, watching Destiny. Scanning for mission objectives. Destiny. Oh, wow. Um, but seeing Destiny, Destiny 1, and they had the hover bike, I was so jealous. I was like, oh, a sci-fi hover bike, I want one, you know? Like, who wouldn't? Like, it makes it so much easier to get around. I mean, you still, you got kind of like the drift and stuff like that, but like... Get the drop ship also, detected. this is like the most boring way to discover artifacts, holy cow. Just like, we. tell if I'm overheating or um maybe it doesn't even freaking matter who I bring with me on this I'm not gonna get out oh well like I 
can't tell if I'm if I'm like overheating from firing or being shot at. Like the Mako had an indicator for like your shields and when it was starting to penetrate your actual, um, like the actual vehicle, and like it would start to light you on fire too, but it would have like objectives. the red indicators. You know, of, oh, this part of the ship, but the part of this part of the vehicle has been compromised, you know? And you could fix it. This it seems like it just wants me to, like, hide for a second and regen itself. I don't know. And what a boring way to find artifacts, just, like, flying over them. <laughs> In Mass Effect 1 it could. I just think the Colossus could like fire at you from like halfway across the map. I don't like that sound. That's not an affirmative you done a good job sound. That's a vehicle's about to explode. Extraction complete. Oh, I was like, they didn't even like point that one out. Like how am I supposed to know? But that was just extra. That was just extra work for me. How nice. I'm like an air Warning. dolphin. Hostile forces approaching. I'm like a I'm like an aero dolphin. An aero dolphin. We're using this priceless artifact, I assume, or artifact like holding facility in some way. I assume this is just like the machinery they use to like protect or preserve it or study it properly, whatever it is that we're after. I don't even know what we're after. What are these artifacts? Like, you can't just say artifacts. Like, what's the context of them? I have very little context for why we're doing this. I realize that they're like archaeologists, maybe. But like, are you glitched? I think you're glitched. But he's like, he's like, oh, the only context I have that I know of is that we've like, that they've got get issues. I don't know what they're. Unless I missed something, maybe... Okay, I have to read this. Let's see. Hang on, let's see. Uh, Firewalker, do we have? Yeah. Okay. I'm on... I'm on this one, I think? No, this one. Yeah, we're on the survey sites one. And search for a survey site. Search the planet for Dr. Case's five remaining survey sites and recover the data within. The Geth were apparently searching for research data. The data cannot be decrypted without a series of codes which lies scattered about the area. Okay. <laughs> that was, this, if this is all it is, this is really lazy. Unless Bioware is going to come out at the end of this and be like, you know... They're like, oh, yes, ah, look at all this stuff you put together into this really cool thing. But also, the acquisition needs to be interesting. Like, I need co I need a little bit of context. Even on, like, some of the small missions, I get context. Like, at least, like, a little bit of context. Like, oh, hey, yeah, the blood pack. You were here being dicks. Oh yes, okay, perfect, you know? That's all I need. Call this the bunny hop method. <laughs> Cause the geth are too stupid to walk around. <laughs> well, they're actually too slow. Also too stupid. I'm actually just an aerial extraordinaire. Look at me go. Never catch me. It's also nice. I just have to, I just have to aim in the general direction. This seems like an extremely inefficient method <laughs> to do anything. Here we go. Ooh. 
Oh, that is not good. If they make me redo all of this, I will scream. They're gonna make me redo all of it. There's not a lot of places. Oh my gosh. I don't have freaking time for this. I need to get episodes recorded and edited and I just don't have the time. Oh, there it is. You can kind of see an artifact. A ball. Reminds me. Why are they always spears? Assassin's Creed does that too. It's always the orbs. Everyone wants to contemplate the orbs, always. I get it. They're they're visually, aesthetically appealing. So I triggered the event and came back over here because apparently their range is extremely limited. Unlike the previous game. This is just thrilling. I hope I include some of this. I'm just usually I like to intentionally choose my shots, like I very rarely just hold down the trigger in any game. I don't like doing that. I am just holding the trigger down. It's not even like the Mako where like you had like you you did have a cooldown on certain like web like you had like your regular bullets which could overheat your vessel if you used it like too long. If you just held down, you were like oh, yep. mission objectives completed. Oop. Um yeah, it would be, you know, you would overheat eventually. And the missile launcher itself required, like, a little bit of a cooldown. Just, just couldn't fire them rapidly. Oh, his <laughs> The data recovered from planet are historically significant artifacts recovered. Dr. Case's location not found among recovered historically significant artifacts. Like, what do you mean? It doesn't mean anything. This is the thing. Archaeology can be so cool in games. Like, it can be... You can have a whole game based around it. You got like Laura Croft, you got like Indiana Jones. Like a whole franchise is based off of, to be fair, it's a very skewed idea of archaeology. But like it can be so cool. It can lead to like, even for like like military stuff like this, you know, like it can lead to like really cool discoveries and stuff like that. Like you're like, wow, in game lore, that's so cool, you know? Or like maybe you just don't care, but like a lot of people would, you know? They're like, oh, that's so neat. Even if it's just like a little blurb. Like that's why I like reading the planet blurbs. They're just little blurbs, but I love them. They give me lore background of the story and what is is this this is just like a this is a dlc designed to be a shooting gallery like there's no context whatsoever for anything that you're doing i mean there's like there's the bare minimum of like we need to go find these people and you get to play with a with a ship that you don't get to have anywhere else you know what i mean like i'm assuming i don't get to have it anywhere else because otherwise i would the, the the dlc thing would say hey yeah do this early so you can get the hammerhead early and none of the the level design for all the areas you can land in and other places would not they are very narrow they're very like here is your starting point here is your end point you know here's some open places for you to fight but they all have cover in them nothing would allow you to like maneuver a vehicle like this around I'm absolutely just making this into one video. <laughs> and just for like completion's sake, I am going to do this DLC and then I will never think about it again. They could, like, the archaeo- like, the, going to rescue, like, doctors and stuff is, like, standard for, like, military, like, uh, like, military games, you know? Like, not necessarily even military games, but, like, military-ish, you know, like, um, or like, you know, even, um, shoot, with like mercenary, anything, any sort of like soldiery type thing, going to like rescue the archeologist or the biologist or whatever, the scientist, you know, is like really standard. And I love it. I also love the ones where it flips the script where the scientist has to go rescue the soldier. I still haven't watched Annihilation. I'm not gonna watch it, but I do wanna read it. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just, <laughs> Like, there's, there's so many cool stories you can tell with this sort of a thing. And it's like, they're just being lazy. Anomaly detected. We've got an anomaly here. 
Sertar's moon, Sinmara, has been used for many generations to monitor its parent star Solveig. It has no atmosphere to interfere with solar observational equipment, which is critical at this juncture. The star recently showed signs of erupting prematurely into a red giant. Interesting. That's not the dark matter. It's potentially related to the dark matter thing that um, Tali was dealing with. In preparation for the day when the critical warning goes out, the extra net channel from Sinmara's research station is given top priority throughout the convoys in the system. The chances of such a signal being received over the sun's magnetic interference at that time is low, but really getting it to a lower channel proved politically untenable. Yes, well. On our sensors. Planetary scans indicate that Sinmara colony is vulnerable to its sun's hazardous solar flares. Malfunction detected in colony's magnetic shield. The shield must be reactivated to avoid exposing colony to unstable solar activity and potential annihilation. All right, we will come back to you. <laughs> I'm in the middle of something very important. The Kobayashi. Kobayashi Maru. Freaking. What? Why does that ring a bell? Ah, it's the training exercise in Star Trek franchise designed to test the character of Starfleet Academy cadets in a no-win scenario. I was like, why? Because the other, there was like a Samiko, I think. These are, these are Japanese names, at least as far as I know. Um, oh, and apparently in Japanese, Kobayashi Maru, Maru can be translated as little wooden boat, an apt metaphor for its defenseless nature. Okay, yeah, because you are, it's a, it's a, it's a design failure scenario. Okay, I'm not like super huge into Star Trek, I like it, I, I would watch it, I actually wanted to watch it like recently, but it's on Paramount Plus and I already paid for like three other streaming services, so I'm not paying for Paramount Plus. So. <laughs> Seems like a crappy system. There's slavers and organ people and just really terrible people apparently in the Alliance on one of the planets I think in a different cluster of the system said specifically that the this particular like the, th the helium 3 planet like the gas giant was not considered critical or was one of the planets it was like not considered critical to the function of the system and so was did not did not the Alliance's protection did not extend to it and I was like oh harsh Wow. That's rough. That's the military for you. Well, are not critical to Something system function. Research station. Woo! Warning, there's valuable data of which we don't know what kind it is. Woohoo! Primary systems online. Adverse geothermal activity has rendered pathfinding function inoperable. Please use manual controls to locate research base. Well, that's cool. I was gonna maybe just pop over there, but now I'm a little scared. They haven't, it hasn't been. Morning. Area compromised due to unstable volcanic It hasn't been helping activity. me pathfind this whole mineral time anyway. Resources detected. Well, now I'm not sure if this is a mineral resource or... Okay. Are these, like, all mineral resources? Are you gonna actually tell me which one is... You know... Necessary or no? Because I'm not gonna do ones that aren't if I can help it. Any of these are. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go past. This is a cool environment, though. Ooh, don't fly the way I was pointing you. Oh, jeez, I was just trying to look. It does look very cool. Why you would put a base in here? Like a research base is beyond me. <laughs> it's a sci-fi thing, I guess. Whatever. Research base entrance Yeah. Okay, ahead. so we're just looking for the research. Ba hey, let me. Oh my gosh, we're getting we're getting out of the hammerhead. Oh shoot, we're not just gonna fly, th fly through the base. You know, okay, this is free. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I literally just wait till you guys see my squad. I literally just picked the squad off the top of my head, Be like just like picked the first two. I was just like boop boop, and I picked the two that were closest to each other because I was like, we're not gonna get out. It doesn't matter. Again, I have Samara and Tally, two of the like. Like we don't we don't have a lot of health. I was bringing I was bringing freaking thing or not thing. I was bringing freaking grunt.
Kenta was like, oh, I want a beefy, you know, character during some of these fights, and freaking... Oh my gosh. Now I have the two, like, smallest. Detected site of incredible significance located beneath the volcano. The unpredictable terrain will make retrieval of any data extremely hazardous. Boy, it's extreme significance, but we're not gonna specify. Oh, glass is broken. That's not good. I was right. This site was a oh, road map leading to the main Prothean okay. ruins. Doctor Aloy and I agree that this must remain a secret at all costs. I will not allow another Eden ah. to occur. I see. I see. That makes sense. That makes sense. This isn't just like for them anymore. Like for in, for potentially a lot of archaeologists, it's not just about um. You know, discovery anymore. But it's like survive, like trying to help. <laughs> you know, like trying to find a way to like. Um. Take down the reapers or like use protein technology against them or whatever. Or even just knowing that. Okay, I got interrupted, so I have no idea what I was saying, but here we go. This hellish planet is a star map that points to a Prothean site of major significance. Dr. O'Willie and I have mere hours to retrieve all we can before the conditions become too dangerous to continue. We learned too late that the local volcanic instability is magnified by our power grid. If only we have more time to study this, I'm sure the key to unlocking everything is here. Everything. Dag this planet. Well. Well. <laughs> I apparently don't have a, uh, potentially this should all have been blown up already or maybe it's just the subterranean stuff that's in trouble <laughs> Activation of research oh of yes that's right we did just read that we did just discover that we should get out can I get out that way no we are going this way oh we gotta go through this way I hope I got everything I needed. Good thing the good thing the doors still work. I'm trying to run, but I can't. I think I'm tired. Sprinting is tiring, you know. So it's Prothean ruins. That makes sense, I guess. Oh, you're gonna make me fly out. Awesome. Oh, I can't freak it. I can't see anything. Oh no, don't make me be warning. Hull damage sustained. Oh no, it's gonna make me do it again. Okay, whew. Just the flying part. just had to like well I guess we did have we did he came right down but we didn't have to jump right into the ship we ended up just sitting there Dr. Case's location discovered that's good how exciting so I'll probably do Geth incursion first and then I'll go get the doctor or find his dead body or whatever, but I'm gonna go here. There's an anomalous weather pattern on the planet Latish. She's had scattered probes on the planet's surface in the hope of that the unreal, unnatural atmospheric conditions might be related to protein technology. Interesting. We have atmospheric manipulation even here. That's kind of, I, I associate Andromeda with that. Latesh, translated from the Salarian dialect as it's still winter, has an almost habitable temperature and an abundant water but shows no signs of life. Regular supervolcanic eruptions in the southern hemisphere have shrouded the sun and led to a climate even more bone chilling than usual. So it seems like those those climactic conditions are from the supervolcanic eruptions, but maybe they're thinking the supervolcanic eruptions are a result of protein technology? 
planetary scans to take signals from sensor pods on the, left on the planet's surface. These pods may contain valuable data. Warning, surface temperature extremely low. Advise keeping hammerhead exposure to the cold in an absolute minimum. Oh, joy. <laughs> Somebody speaks? Okay. I don't even know what that... The blue beam was. What was the blue beam all about? Was that, like... Was that Prothean technology? you think it would be not that hard to discover. Oh yeah, it's definitely the work of Protheans when there's a giant blue beam up in the sky. That's a dick move. I mean, yeah, they started, you know, they, they started inhabiting, inhabiting it before getting permission. But it looks like they did try the homeworld approach, like a new homeworld approach. And but the council's all, everybody's like super racist against the Quarians still. And I can't, like, honestly, would they would actually start bombarding them? Their colonies would be, like, that's just an act of, like, aggression. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, that's, that's massacring civilians. Like, what, like, there's, like, would, they would, they would probably actually get away with that, but, like, I don't, I feel like the other species and, like, other people, other, like, governments should be like, hey, no, like, you don't get to just, bombard people you know and if nothing else like let them let them work with the l to like have a little like a couple small colonies you know like i don't see why i mean maybe the l are probably dicks to the Koreans too but like geez well this is cool a human dominated world that were 95 percent of its surface covered by salt water trident is home to it what an excellent name for it Home to a dazzling array of life, the oceans are filled with creatures ranging from tiny bivalves, little clams and stuff, to mammoth vertebrates, e unequaled even by Earth's whales and ichthyosaurs. Ooh, those were so cool. I actually did a project on ichthyosaurs when I was a kid because I thought they were super neat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I'm, because there was two of them. There was like the long neck underwater dinosaur that I, I can't remember the name of, but I think the ichthyosaur was the one that looked like a giant crocodile slash dolphin kind. Not even dolphin, like a turtle, but like <laughs> kind of with the turtle flippers, uh, but it was huge, and a giant looking crocodile thing, with the body of a giant, giant, slim, streamlined turtle. <laughs> um, small archipelagos create little, what little land there is, and a valuable real estate spot over constantly. You should just do, like, water world, like, create, create you know, floating colonies. Underwater extraction operations have recovered a number- Oh, live underwater! Uh, under, uh, underwater extraction operations have recovered a number of valuable minerals from the ocean floor, including iridium, uranium, and dust form element zero. A largely lawless world. Really? Of course it's home to- it's a human-dominated world. Trident is home to a rogues gallery of unethical corporations exploiting the resources of planet and actual rogues, criminals, slavers, and mercenaries working in the shadows. Due to extreme weather conditions, all traffic to the surface is grounded. Trident space for control for condition will persi persist until the end of the hurricane season. Ooh, that sucks. New Custo. That's actually because Custo, if I remember correctly, was a huge advocate for the oceans. Like ocean preservation. Let me. Yeah, Jacques Custo. An oceanographer. Yep, yep, yep. Big, big, uh, big on the ocean. So that's inter that's an interesting. It's a cute, like I don't know, it's the little details. I love the little details. Macara is largest moon. Copus is a desolate place with extremely thin atmosphere. Its crust is largely silica based, and there are no signs of water like its parent planets. High al albedo. Al mm, am I saying? I'll bet I'm not saying that right. Mm, let me look that up. We'll look that word up. Hmm. <laughs> al. Let's see. 
Albedo. It albedo. Okay, so it just sounds very similar. Libido. Uh, albedo is the proportion of the incident light or radiation that is reflected by a surface, typically that of a planet or moon. Uh, it's high. So it's high reflective quality. Keeps it from being a total inferno. And when occluded by Makira, its temperatures can be nearly tolerable. So when it's covered, essentially, like, it, not interfered with, but like, yeah, like, passed by. Uh, its lower gravity can easily be countered by a vehicular or personal mass effect field for comfortable exploration. How convenient for me. Can I... Where is it? Oh, okay, I was like, it's like pointing down. Broke away. Something on our sensors. Prothean artifacts detected on the surface. Artifacts are protected by a powerful energy barrier. Scans detect muted mechanical signatures consistent with hidden automated defenses. Let's go find some dead bodies. We're definitely gonna land this time. This is actually probably a pretty good squad. We got close range, two close range, and one long range. This time I figured I'd be getting out. Oh my gosh, it's the little bugs from Resident Evil! Ah, uh, dead blue suns. Size spectacular time, however, has proved to be the real enemy. Even with those blue sun slugs, hired to protect the dig site, we barely managed to reach the shield before the get arrived. How can they know our movements almost before we do? My beaming my thoughts directly to them. I must find out how they are doing this. I shall ask Dr. Oloy for whatever help he can provide. <gasps> Dr. Oloy is a traitor. I can t I can already tell. <laughs> Dr. Oloy has been... Oh, I bet you Dr. Oloy was uh, corrupted at some point. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like, get... Like, manipulated by sovereign... Or, uh, Reaper, like, mind manipulation techniques and now follows whatever the Geth tells him to do. This is a great ruin. Except, uh, they're just, uh, I can't tell if these ruins were crumbling or before or, like, like, this is, like, an impact thing or just a crumbling thing. Come in handy. Oh. It's too late for me. They're still in my head, stealing my. Oh, thoughts. maybe he's doing it. I can't keep them up. Maybe he's the traitor, actually. I've got no choice but to destroy this relic and myself. Maybe it's not Dr. O'Loy, but it's the cars or whatever. That would be interesting. Like unintentional, like unknowingly has been. Uh, exposed to the mind manipulation stuff. Oh, shoot! Oh my gosh! It's like the one we found in Mass Effect 1 that you got like a. You had like. Oh wow. That you had um. Like a text adventure almost with. Oh, this is cool! Am I gonna do another one? Where I'm like seeing the prehistoric human past. But where's the guy? Don't touch! That seems like a terrible idea. If it is Prothean, though, Shepard's used to doing that. Excuse me? It just did. Mass manipulation? Excuse me? That's it? That's all we're gonna get from them? There better be something more from that. That was it? Recovering the relic has provided valuable new data on biotics? I mean, yeah, we got the biotics thing from their... From their... From their computer, which is like the data that they had. Oh shoot! I think this is this is a bonus. Usually you only get five, so this is definitely a bonus one. Cool. Um, not worth it at all. Do not recommend that DLC. 
Holy cow. Holy cow. That was a massive waste of time. <laughs> Legit, like, no context. Uh, they could have done something cool with the orb. Like, I'm pretty sure that was technically mass manipulation where it like shrunk itself, but it probably maintains the same like density. Like, and like we had that thing in the previous game in Mass Effect 1 where like you touched the orb and like it sent Shepard back into like, uh, like a prehistoric memory, essentially of like a prehistoric human. Well, that was lame. And if I have ever done this before, I scrubbed it from my memory. But I'm hoping to keep it in my memory a little bit so that I'll know to never do it again. So, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. This is probably two videos, but I'll see what I can do to make it just one. Uh, maybe just a long one. We'll see. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, really quick one. I say thank you to my patrons. To all my patrons, but to especially Rizcolito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to my tree tier patrons. Christopher, thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. And you're the super bestest. Thank you so much. And an extra special shout out to Adam, who is my other tree tier tree tier patron. And who is also super awesome and super cool. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you all again. And I hope to see you in the next one.